Hello friends, I'm back today with a book to share with you. I have another big book similar to the one that we read yesterday and this book will also have a writing activity at the end of the book. So um, I had one sweet friend respond on Seesaw last night with her writing about um, the life in a tree. So I hope you guys are working on that. If you have not, you need to go back and watch yesterday's video about the story Life in a Tree, and then you can respond to me. That would be perfect. If you don't know how to respond on Seesaw, put it in your packet and I'll get it when we come back to school. Today's big book is called Squirrels All Year Long. Again, this book is nonfiction very similar to the book we read yesterday. When you open the book, you see a table of contents giving us a very strong signal that this is a nonfiction book. Remember, nonfiction means real. It means it gives you information. It does not tell a story. A story has character, setting, problem, solution. Nonfiction books do not hold those components. They do not hold those story elements. This book is going to tell us about squirrels all year long. It's going to give us information, facts about squirrels. It is going to have photographs, not illustrations. It's spring. A mother squirrel builds a nest in a tree. Squirrel babies are born in the nest. The mother feeds them with her milk. Soon the babies begin to find their own food. It's summer. The squirrels scamper around. They balance on tree branches, telephone wires, and even clotheslines. They leap through the air. See, these are photographs. They feast on fruits and seeds. It's fall. The squirrel grows thick, warm coats. They crack open nuts and acorns with their sharp teeth. They hide food for the winter. Sometimes they steal food from bird feeders. It's winter. The squirrels use their tails to keep warm in their dens. And to keep warm outdoors. They leave footprints in the snow. There's the squirrel tracks in the snow. They eat nuts they buried in the fall and wait for spring to come again. Okay, let's talk about the squirrels in the spring. At the beginning of the story, we learned that a mother squirrel gives birth to her children in the nest. The mother squirrel built a nest in the tree. And at the beginning of this story, the newborn baby squirrels do not have any fur and their eyes are closed shut. So let's think about why would she make her nest in the tree? So I wanna give you a second to think about that. Okay, her nest would be in the tree so she could keep her children safe the mother squirrel would want to protect her children from other predators on the ground. So if her children are high in a tree, then maybe like a fox could not come and um, destroy her nest and she could protect her children. Okay, after spring, we have summer. In the summer, the squirrel comes out and he begins to scamper through the trees. What does it mean to scamper? What do you think that means? It means to hurry, to run around. 
What's he looking for? Why would he be scampering in a tree? Maybe hopping around in the tree, leaping around. Why would he be scampering in the tree? He's looking for nuts. He's looking for berries. He's looking for seeds to eat in the tree. Much like the book we talked about yesterday, that the tree provides life and uh, food for many animals. Um, the tree is, um, if you can see the branch, the tree is under the squirrel. He is holding on to the branch with his sharp claws, and that helps him not to fall out of the tree. Um, if you can see, the squirrel has pointy ears, and he's looking around, and he's listening. What do you think the squirrel would be listening for? The squirrel would be listening for predators, um, for another animal in the tree. After summer is fall, and you can just tell by the background of the photographs how the year has changed. We've went from spring to summer to fall, and the leaves have changed from green to brown. And now it's time for the squirrels to start preparing for winter. And they have to dig holes to store their food and their thick fur coats begin um, to come in so their fur can keep them warm through the winter. Now, um, as you can tell, he's, um, he's holding something with his paws probably an acorn. Squirrels love acorns. And look at the color of his fur. Why do you think he would need um, that thick fur coat and that fur coat to be that color? So he could camouflage in with the leaves, with the trees, and he could stay safe from predators. And now it is winter. So we went from spring to summer to fall to winter. And you can see his tail is really bushy. Sometimes in the winter, a squirrel will stay in their den. But sometimes in the winter, they come out of the den. What do you think he's looking for? He's looking for those acorns, those seeds, those nuts that he buried back in the summer and the fall. And what he might do is he might dig them up. And this is probably the hardest season for the squirrels because there's not an abundance of food. So probably right now the trees are bare, which means they're empty and there are no longer acorns on the ground. The snow has covered the acorns and the seeds and the berries. And so this is when the squirrel has to survive. And if he did not prepare in the summer and the fall, then it makes it, um, very difficult for him to survive the cold winter. This is what we call a flying squirrel. He does not have wings and he cannot really fly, but he can jump from tree branch to tree branch. And his skin um, folds out and acts like a parachute. And these squirrels um, only come out at night. And this squirrel looks, mm, Maybe similar to other squirrels, but maybe kind of similar to a bat. This is a red squirrel. And um, all the other squirrels we, um, we looked at earlier in the book, all of those squirrels were gray. But this squirrel is a red squirrel. It's a reddish brown. Um, they make more noise than their gray cousins. They love to eat pine cones. And why do you think they eat pine cones? Well, probably because they have sharp teeth. These are also good swimmers. This kind of squirrel is a ground squirrel. And some squirrels live underground. It means they dig burrows. And this squirrel is called a 13-lined ground squirrel. It has a short tail and it has 13 lines on its back. And again, it looks similar to the other squirrels, uh, the gray squirrels that we saw at the beginning, but, and then also it does look different. Its body looks slimmer and um, its tail does not look as bushy as the other squirrels. And this is a chipmunk. A chipmunk is a small ground squirrel. And there are some very famous chipmunks, Simon, Theodore, and Alvin. 
And this chipmunk also lives in an underground burrow and his cheeks stick out. And you can tell it's a chipmunk because a chipmunk has five black stripes on his back. And you can tell that very similar to the squirrel, the chipmunk is eating with his paws, okay? Now, today I'm not going to give you the main topic. Yesterday when we read the book about life in a tree, I supplied the main topic for you. Today I'm not going to do that. Today I want you to think about what we read about the squirrels all year long and what I showed you on the cards and I want you to decide what would be the main topic of squirrels all year long. So we started in the spring and we went spring, summer, fall, winter through the life of a squirrel. And the squirrel begins its life in the nest with its mother. Um, eventually the squirrel goes out on its own to find its own food, to scamper around in the tree. And then um, the squirrel will eventually in the fall have to gather acorns for the winter and store them away so he can have enough food to provide um, his family um, with nutrition for the winter. So I want you to think about what would be the main idea of this story. How does a squirrel change from the beginning of the story to the end of the story? Their fur changed, their fur got thicker. Um, so how does the squirrel change throughout the seasons? Um, what does the squirrel do throughout the seasons? Maybe at the beginning of the story, you know, he was warm, the squirrel was in a warm nest with its mom in, in the tree. But at the end of the story, you know, he's in a burrow under the ground. Uh, hiding from the harsh cold winter elements. So think about the difference between the beginning of the story and the end of the story. Um, think about what squirrels need to survive. Um, so just think about what you heard in the story and try to come up with a main topic yourself. Remember a main topic still tells what the story was mostly about. So um, squirrels do many different things during uh, the different seasons throughout the year. So I can't wait to hear your main topic. I can't wait to see your writing. I hope to see some of your writing on Seesaw. And if you can't get it to me that way, you can put it in your packet and I will get it hopefully on November 30th. And I hope you're staying safe and staying well. Hope you can tune in today for our live Google Meet at 2.15 and I will post the code around 2.10 for that today. Goodbye, friends.